Welcome to Distributed Aggregations with Aerospike. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to do aggregations, which in principle is fairly similar to a MapReduce that you might have seen in other databases. So we're talking about running queries on multiple machines, all in parallel, bringing the results of each of those queries to a central location, and then doing a final reduction uh, to, to take a look at the results. The main difference between what Aerospike is doing here and what you might see in another system like Hadoop is that this is on top of dynamic data, meaning that it's changing all the time. So with Aerospike, you're looking at a 24 by 7 by 365 database, and the data itself is changing constantly throughout that time. So to start with, uh, let's take a look at a cluster. We've got a three node cluster here. Uh, I am applying a load against this of about 250,000 transactions per second, about 240,000 read, and roughly around 10,000 write constantly. And this will occur through the duration of the rest of this demo. Now to, to start with, uh, we need to take a look at some data. And I can bring up an interface right now. And I can take a look at a file where I have flight information for all the flights in North America, domestic flights in North America, uh, in January of 2012. So I've got information about uh, the dates uh, of the flight, the airline, the origination and destination airports, as well as some other information about the duration. So this is going to be important later. And I want to uh, load this into the database first. So the way to do that is there is a um, a tool that we have to load data into the database uh, does require a little bit of knowledge about what you're trying to load in. And here there's a field called FL date uh, bin that I'm going to load in and apply an index on later. Uh, the reason why this is important is that you might want to run a range query and that's kind of how we're going to do it on, on the date. So right now if I look at the system, the index, uh, ha there is no index on the data. And I can now create one by running the AQL, or Aerospike Query Language. This will allow me to connect into the database cluster and uh, create an index on it. So the syntax is simple, uh, create index, uh, and I'm going to give the index a name, FL date, on, uh, and then the uh, namespace and the set of data that I'm applying it on as well as the actual bin or kind of like the column in a relational database uh, for the data. And then I also want to tell it to make it numeric. Uh, the reason why I want to do this is that this will allow me to apply a range query onto the data. So I've created this index here. And if I take a look at the Aerospike interface, uh, reload this, it, it shows the uh, index has now been applied on FL date with the, with the appropriate bin. So I've now gone ahead and created uh, an index uh, in the database. It's not in just one location, it's in multiple locations. And I want to now load the data. And to do that, uh, there is this uh, loader program that uh, Aerospike has, um, the Aerospike loader. Uh, the syntax is simple. It's run loader with location, the namespace, the set of data that you're going to apply this into called flights, um, the configuration file. So this is the configuration file I just showed you, and then the actual file itself. And I'm going to load up all this data, which is about a million records. Now in a lot of ba databases, when you try loading data where the data has an index, this is going to take a long time. And in the case of Aerospike, it's going to take seconds instead of you know many minutes to load this data. And we've now loaded up that million records. That's now in the database. Uh, and we've gone ahead and, and put all those things in. So what we're looking at doing now is creating a distributed query through the system, kind of the, the, in the, the way that we're showing you in the diagram here. And what's important is the stream information on the bottom. There are what we call UDFs, or user-defined functions, that are going to apply some logic on all of the data uh, in, in the cluster. So uh, to do that, let's go ahead and open up a copy of, uh, of Eclipse. And with Eclipse, I can now take a look at the UDF. Here it's called Simple Aggregation. And at the top, there's some time functions. Uh, lower, there is a function that will increment the uh, flight if, if, uh, if it was late. There's a merge function, uh, and then kind of a, a final function that, that gives you the final results. Now to call this, there has to be some code that is written on the client side to do this. And there is a file up here that we can call simpleaggregation.java. I'll open that up. 
And there's some information, of course, on how to connect into the cluster, which is important in terms of the host and, and etc. Uh, but the meat of the logic is down a little bit below, where we can see that I have uh, applied a, a secondary index uh, filter for the duration uh, of the flight or the time of the flight, uh, which was January 26th of 2012. So if I run this right now, uh, runs very quickly. It's distributed the query across all the systems and it's come back in about one and a half seconds to give me a table for all of the airlines and the percentage of flights that uh, that were late for those airlines. Now to review what we've uh, done here is we've taken a look at data that is distributed on different nodes in the cluster. We've applied a secondary index on time to those. So we're only looking at the ones that fit a particular date, uh, January 26th, 6th in this example. And then we have uh, done some calculations to figure out which of these flights were late and then created a table that will show us for each airline which of these were late. Now with more nodes in your cluster, you could have actually done this faster, and this gives you a sample of how the aggregation query uh, system works within Aerospike.